Hi and welcome to GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. Just want to do a quick video on adapting lenses for Micro Four Thirds. Now, this is something that's uh, fairly straightforward and uh, the only real important thing is the, um, the distance between the back of the lens and the sensor. And that can easily be adjusted by the use of uh, adapters. So here we have uh, my Micro Four Thirds camera and I've got a, this is a 20 mil, that's a 20 mil uh, 1.7 lens Panasonic, great little um, lens and you'll see that the, the back of the, the lens there is quite close to the sensor when it's fitted and that gives me autofocus, works absolutely treat. That's a 20 mil so it's an effective focal length of 40 mil and that's a, a 1.7 and if you convert that to the same sort of depth of field you'd get to a full frame that would be equivalent to a 40 mil um, 3.4 so like a 3.5 which is lovely. Now, there are some interesting old lenses out there, and there are also some cheap as chips old lenses out there. Now, this lens is actually my other half, so I bought it for her. I got it well cheap off of eBay. It was a bargain, and she uses it as her low-light indoor lens. So I wanted one as well, but I thought I'd go a bit different. So what I've gone for is, let's get it off there, a, this is an Olympus 50mm. Nifty, so it's a uh, the original sort of nifty fifty from a what would be a thirty five mil camera, so it's a fifty mil, and it's an f one point four. So look at all that lovely light that can go through there. Massive aperture on this one point four, and to set the flange distance, so the difference from the back of the lens to the sensor, because the light has to be directed to the different size of the sensor, you need to move it away now great thing about Micro Four Thirds is that you don't really have to worry about connectivity. So you just pop the, it's just a see through, it's just an empty tube, there's nothing in that, there's no connections, nothing, that's just basically bolted on and all that's doing is moving the flange distance, the back of the lens away a bit so that when the image goes through and it gets projected onto the sensor, it, it sort of fits right and it, it works and the focusing works and it's all fine. So. What do we have? Now I've got a 50 mil, so equivalent full frame effect is gonna give us like 100 mil. At f1.4 would be a 2.8. So we've got a 100 mil, 2.8 lens when it comes to the type of depth of field that you're looking at. Great for indoors, um, great for good bokeh blown out in the background. And I'm not talking about distorting the background with this. You can destroy the background with this. So people that tell me, yeah, but you don't get shallow depth of field with, uh, you know, Micro Four Thirds. You can, believe me, you can. And I will, I'll take some pictures and, uh, and I'll show you that you can. So, how does it work? Well, ultimately, you have to go into your camera and tell it that there is a lens attached because it won't know it. And every time you turn on, you get like a warning and it'll either say there's no lens attached or whatever. So I've gone in and I've set the menu to shoot without lens, which means it will still shoot even though there's not a lens attached. Then you have to set the focal length. That's a 50 mil lens. So I've set it to 50 mil. And when you turn it off and on again, it will actually say current focal length is set to 50 mil. Do you want to change this or keep it? So you just say no, and then you or just press the shutter button and just carry on. And it's just checking that you haven't swapped it for a different focal length lens. It knows that there isn't a connection to a, a, a you know a, a native lens. Now, the beauty of some of these old Olympus lenses, they're quite a nice size. When you look at the sizes of all these, the uh, the Olympus lens is you know it's a nice size. It's a fifty mil, so there's not a lot in it, and the other benefit of this is if you want, um, you know, everyone was crying out for that Nikon DF, the more considered, uh, slow sort of photography where, you know, you're not sure you, you want to, you want everything to be clicky. Well, this, this makes it a little bit more like that because, you know, we set our aperture using the, the clicky on the, on the lens like you would on a Fuji. I have it in aperture priority so that when I change the aperture on here, it obviously changes the lens. It doesn't register what the aperture is, but because the sensor is reading 
the image, it knows to adjust things like your shutter speed or your ISO. And because we've told it it's a 50 mil lens, it knows that that's equivalent to like a 100 mil. So it will set a, a slightly higher shutter speed to compensate for that so you don't get shake. Also, there is a benefit to this you know, particular body in that there's image stabilization. So this becomes a stabilized 100 mil f 2.8 lens technically so what are the downsides obviously there's no autofocus but again micro four thirds it's so easy to all to manually focus i just press i can either do it just by eye on the screen which is clear enough to, for me to see when it's in focus or i can press a button here and it takes me to my my punching and also that that then gives me the um the focus peaking as well and and you can use that screen to to focus and you know really nail the focus it's um it works absolutely fine and because the the focusing on these is mechanical and it's smooth and lovely it is actually a pleasure to um to focus and it doesn't take that long i mean i'm gonna go i'm set to infinity and i'm just gonna focus on um there's a little leopard over there i'm just gonna focus on his face and bosh i'm there so i've gone duh, 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 and i'm there and I'm, I'm focused on him absolutely fine so yeah it's not going to be great for you know particularly for moving subjects but for more considered photography portraits things like that where you want a real shallow depth of field then this is a, a good option now the closest lens i'd say to this is probably the olympus 45 1.8 or the panasonic 42.5 1.8 or you've got the noctichron which is a 1.2 but they're all fairly expensive lenses i picked this up bear in mind this is a 50 mil 1.4 with an adapter for about 70 pounds so for less than 100 bucks you can you know pick yourself up a really good low light lens for not a lot of money now in using this are there any problems well you do get a little bit if you shoot wide open you do get um, instances where you're going to see chromatic aberration um, that is one of the things that old lenses never really dealt with and it's more prevalent on digital cameras so it's a bit of a double jeopardy there the new lenses and some of the new cameras do account for that but it is definitely there when you're shooting wide open so be careful of chromatic aberration the purple fringing round uh, bright areas the other downside is the image is it's not as sharp as some of the sort of uh, like this for instance this 12 to 35 it's not quite as sharp as that and not quite as sharp as the 20 mil you know so it's not the sharpest lens that you're going to ever going to use but what it does give you is a fairly natural flat image shall we say it's not super contrasty depending on the light if the light is really perfect then you'll get a nice contrasty image but more often than not the image will look a bit washed out as it were and it's almost like using a, a raw file and if you're shooting in raw anyway it doesn't really matter because there's there's plenty of um, room for maneuver in actually pulling out contrast highlight shadow details in your image any, anyway so i wouldn't suggest this is a, a lens that you use for just taking jpegs and then uploading or using or printing it's one where you're going to take the picture uh, you're going to develop the picture yourself and um you, you know make it your own you don't have to spend lots of money doing that you know i quite often just stick it in um, just put it into snapseed to just put the jpeg into snapseed and you can develop that okay it's absolutely fine and i will show you some images at the end where i've where i've done that so overall if you want a cheap different option for shallow depth of field on micro four thirds and adapted lenses then this is this is a great way to go i mean i'd looked at lots of different lenses and i've had the 135 um 3.5 before and things like that but a 100 mil 1.4 lens or equivalent 2.8 is to me is like a really good all-rounder it's good for portraits it's a good indoor low light lens and uh, so far i'm really pleased with it and you know for not a lot of money for a change you know you've got something pretty pretty kick-ass so I mean, if you think the 75 18 lens that's about 800 pound 
the Noctucron 1.2, again, that's about £800. So the, the closest potential would be the Panasonic 42.5, that's about, uh, I think that's about £300. And the Olympus 45 1.8, which is a great lens, obviously you're going to get autofocus on that, um, that's going to be a couple of hundred pounds. But as I say, this it gives you that extra stop of light um, and uh, that sort of clicky, old-fashioned, nice feel to it. Not a lens you're going to use all the time, but for now and again, portrait's a fantastic little lens. So don't be afraid to try these. Just pick yourself up one of these little um, shoot-through adapters and uh, then you can try all different lenses on and you're not spending a lot of money and you can buy them and sell them and, and whatnot. So, you know, no big issue there. So anyway, this has been GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions on using adapted lenses on your Micro Four Thirds. I'll see you soon. Bye.